Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. The title of our experiment today is Limiting Reactant, experiment number four in your lab manual. Now, in the class, in the theoretical lecture, we have explained the scientific identification of, ex of limiting reactant. And we said that, just to remind you before starting the, our experiment, to remind you, limiting reactant is one of the reactants that consumed completely at the end of the reaction and it indicates the amount of the product it limits the amount of the product this is why we call it limiting reactant so what we will do today in order to recognize this concept and to illustrate it look three objectives should be satisfied in our experiment today. The first objective is to perform a precipitation reaction. We can study the limiting reactant by applying different types of reactions, but today we selected to apply one of these different types, which is called the precipitation reaction. Precipitation from a precipitate. Precipitate mean meaning uh, the formation of a solid material from the solution. So today, this is the first objective. We will start with, with two aqueous solutions of two different reactants. We react with them with each other. One of the products will be a white precipitate and this is why we call it a precipitation reaction. We will pe perform this reaction by ourselves today. The second objective to indicate the limiting reactant and the excess reactant. Today, two reactants will, or we will start with two reactants. One of them definitely will be the limiting, and the second one will be the excess reactant. So this is the second objective. We should indicate which one of these is the limiting and which one is the excess. And the last objective, to determine the percentage of each reactant in the reaction mixture. What does that mean? As I said, we will start with two reactants. These two reactants will be given as a mixture. The mass of this mixture is one gram, so it has a certain mass. I know its mass. It's about one gram. According to the third objective, we must determine the percentage of each reactant in this reaction mixture. Yani out of one gram, how many grams represents or represent the mass of the first reactant and how many represents the mass of the second reactant. For example, out of one gram, if the first reactant is 0 0.6 gram, it means that its percentage is 60%. 0 0.6 over 1 times 100 percent and the second one will be 40 percent and so on okay what's the reaction that should be performed today the reaction will take place between sodium phosphate dodecahydrate aq means aqueous so this solute or this ionic compound should be dissolved in water to initiate the reaction. And the second reactant is barium chloride, BaCl2, dihydrate, again it's aqueous. When they react with each other, different products will be obtained. The most important product for us is this product which is written in the red. It's barium phosphate and it will appear as a white precipitate. This is why we call it precipitation reaction. As you can see, we will start with two aqueous solutions, with two clear solutions. Aqueous means a material that is completely dissolved in water to form an aqueous solution. So these two solutions are clear. We can see nothing. But at the end of the reaction, the white precipitate will be formed. And the second product is 6NaCl and 30H2O. 
actually we don't care about these products and this is the product that will be or uh, that is important for us how to, to perform this reaction and what are the steps of the procedure look we will start as we said with the solid reaction mixture solid reaction mixture this is very important so initially the two reactants will be taken in their solid state and they will mix together according to the reaction to, to the equation the reaction will take place in aqueous solution which means nothing will happen before adding water so if we just mix the two solid reactants with each other the reaction will not take place how to initiate the reaction by adding water when you add water you call, you will convert them from solid state to aqueous state and the reaction will immediately take place after that so the first step weigh one gram about one gram again it's not important to weigh one with five decimal zeros you can take any mass around one but take it as it is from the from the balance one gram of this reaction mixture and place them into a bigger beaker about 500 milliliter beaker so here is the reaction our reaction mixture then add 200 milliliter of water using a graduated cylinder once you added water to the mixture the reaction immediately will begin it will take place now this reaction at room temperature to be complete it needs about two to three hours it's a long time so to increase the rate of the chemical reaction and to make the time of the reaction shorter we will heat using a hot plate we will heat at 80 degrees Celsius which means we will not allow the reaction mixture to boil why I'll inform you why during the procedure part for about 20 minutes so by heating we will make time shorter instead of three hours we need only about 20 minutes okay after 20 minutes what will happen you will observe the appearance of two layers one of them is the aqueous layer here this is the aqueous layer and the second layer is a second is a solid layer represented by a white precipitate why this white precipitate will be formed the question we can get the question from the equation look to the chemical equation because barium phosphate is one of the products and it represents the white precipitate after 20 minutes what we will do allow the precipitate to settle down settle down means completely precipitation complete precipitation and it means that we should wait until the aqueous layer is completely and perfectly separated from the solid layer this is the meaning of settling down this will need about five minutes just put the reaction mixture on the bench for about five minutes what will happen after that here is our reaction the aqueous layer will be the upper layer while the solid precipitate will settle down it will precipitate down then two more steps are required what are these steps i'll explain them in the next video okay now what we'll do we will as i said we will carry out two more steps one of them is decanting what the meaning of decanting this is one of the physical separation techniques that has been explained in experiment number two do you, in experiment number two do you remember physical separation techniques one of them was decanting so we will decant two portions about 50 milliliters of the clear layer so here 
we just want to decant the clear, the clear layer, not the whole clear layer, a part of it, two portions in two small beakers. Each portion consists of about 40 to 50 milliliters of this aqueous layer. Why? I will tell you why. And the second step is filtration. Now look, here we decanted two layers, but the precipitate and some of water are still exist in the original beaker. So what we will we'll do uh, with this remaining solution, we will filtrate it. So take the remaining mixture here and filtrate it. Why? To collect the white precipitate of the product. This is very, very important. Because the mass of the white precipitate is very important and fundamental to carry out our procedure perfectly. Without this mass, we can do nothing. Nothing can be done without the mass of the product. So this is very, very important. How to take the mass of the product, how to record it correctly and properly, as we said previously, we should weigh the empty filter paper, carry out the filtration, wait until the filter paper is dry, then reweight the filter paper with the precipitate, subtract the mass of the empty filter paper to get the mass of the precipitate accurately. Okay. So, these are the two steps that should be carried out for our reaction mixture, filtration and decanting. What we will do in decanting now, what we will do with these two decanted portions? What's the aim of taking these two portions? The aim is, follow the scheme here, we should follow the scheme, this is small scheme, why? To indicate the excess and the limiting reactant. Don't forget, this is the second objective. The second objective is to indicate the limiting and the excess reactant. So we can do it by applying this scheme. Type why we took the portions from the aqueous layer? Why we didn't take a portion from the solid layer? What's the question? What's the answer? Sorry. The answer to this question is that the excess reactant, the possibilities of excess reactant are and A3PO4 or barium chloride and both of them are what? Both of them are aqueous which means they are soluble in water which means that they will present, they will appear where? In the aqueous layer. They will never precipitate. Precipitation means a material that is insoluble in water and since these two reactants are soluble in water definitely I will find them, I must find them in the aqueous layer, not in the solid layer. This is why the decanting or the uh, 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 investigation of the excess reactant should take place by using the aqueous layers. Take portion number one, any one of them, both are identical. Portion number one, then add about one milliliter of sodium phosphate. Here, sodium phosphate is pre-prepared. We prepare it, or we prepare this solution, and we put it in a flask, as we'll sh show you later on. Take about one milliliter of this sodium phosphate solution and add it to portion number one. What are the possibilities of this addition step? Two possible observations may take place. The first possible observation is the cloudness. Cloudness means the solution will become milky. Milky, yani a white precipitate will form. This is called a positive result. So here, if the cloudness takes place, it means that the reaction or the, yeah, the test is positive and the reaction took place. The second possibility, nothing happened. No cloudness. This is a negative result, which means no reaction took place. Taib, let's try to explain the meaning of each possibility, of each observation. If the cloudness appeared, what does that mean? It means that when I added sodium phosphate to the clear solution in portion number one, sodium phosphate reacted with something inside the clear solution. What is the material that exists in the clear solution and reacts immediately with sodium phosphate? The answer is barium chloride. 
because each material reacts with the other one. So if the reaction takes place and a cloud disappeared, it means that sodium phosphate found barium chloride to react with it. What does that mean? It means that we ended up with barium phosphate at the end of our reaction. So barium phosphate, sorry, barium sorry, chloride is the excess reactant and sodium phosphate is the limiting reactant. Did you understand what I said? If you didn't understand, I repeat it and show you can ask me during the lab session. Then I use portion number two to confirm this result. Yani hai tamahdin, or the uh, portion number two is taken just to confirm, to carry out a confirmatory test for the initial test. Tay, what the meaning of the second observation? If I added sodium phosphate to portion number one and nothing happened, no cloudness, nothing, it means that sodium phosphate didn't find barium chloride to react with it. Why it didn't find barium chloride? Because barium chloride simply consumed completely. So barium chloride is the limiting reactant. This is the definition of limiting reactant. The, the reactant that consumed completely. And definitely sodium phosphate will be the excess reactant. I can, how can I confirm this result? I use portion number two to confirm that. How? Inshallah, during the procedure part, I'll demonstrate all these steps in front of you. Okay.